Hello good people and welcome to part 13 in our beginner's guide to interior design rendering tutorial series. In this one we'll be taking a look at the V-Ray physical camera which amongst other things gives you granular control over your camera settings as well as gives you the ability to enable real world effects such as depth of field or motion blur. Okay, all right, everybody. So let's start at the very beginning here and let's first talk about how you bring in a very physical camera. In general, there's two different ways on how you can do that. One way is if you already have a standard Cinema 4D camera in your scene, you can just right click on it, go under V-Ray tags and you just bring in a V-Ray physical camera tag, okay? That's one way how you can do that. The other way would be if I just jump out of my camera real quickly here, the other way would be to go under the V-Ray menu up here, just go under cameras and select the V-Ray physical camera object from the list here. And there you go. Now, either way you approach it, the end result is going to be the same. You're going to have a standard cinema for the camera. It's going to have a V-Ray physical camera tag applied to it. There is a slight difference between the two approaches. And that difference is that if you apply a uh, V-Ray physical camera tag to your camera, to your standard Cinema 3D camera that is, well then all the parameters inside the V-Ray physical camera tag are going to be preset a little bit differently. So the defaults are going to be slightly different compared to if you were to create a new V-Ray physical camera object this way. Okay, so that's going to be the only difference is a minor difference. Uh, it's just about how those defaults are set. All right. All right, cool. So uh, with that said, uh, let me just uh, jump into this newly created V-Ray physical camera tag. And let me just put the VFB over here. Let me just try to uh, position this newly created camera so that we get a bit of an interesting angle going. So maybe something kind of like this, maybe. I'm gonna go into this camera. I'm gonna maybe play with the focal length a little bit, increase that to 80 or so. I think that looks pretty cool. I'm also going to zero out the coordinates here and I think this could look pretty cool okay it's a pretty cool angle all right okay so uh, with that done um, let's talk about the next thing on the list here and that is the fact that as you've probably already noticed as soon as we've brought in a V-Ray physical camera okay as soon as we've got that tag going on our camera there you're going to see that the exposure of that camera is going to change. And that is because a default, uh, or not default, but standard Cinema 4D cameras, they don't have the V-Ray physical camera tag applied to it. Those cameras have that default exposure set to them. Okay, and so does the camera that's there if you just uh, hover around in the viewport. Okay, there's just a certain default exposure that we're using for that. But if you have a V-Ray physical camera in your scene and you're looking through it, well then, the exposure for that camera is going to be controlled um, or defined uh, in its parameters. And if I'm being more specific, it's going to be defined in the color and exposure sort of set of parameters here. Okay, so let's explore that for a second. By default, you're going to see that the exposure type here is set to physical exposure. And what this means is, is that the camera is going to behave like a real world camera would. If you want to adjust the exposure, you need to play with it with the camera's aperture settings. OK, and as you can see, the aperture settings are pretty much exactly the same as they are on a real world camera. So if you wanted to up the exposure here, you would probably want to up the ISO. Let's up it to 800. You're going to see that's going to make the image a little bit brighter. And if you lower the F number, say to one in this case, then the image is going to get even brighter. OK, so. Uh, there are pros and cons to this physical exposure approach, uh, but we're going to dive into those pros and cons a little bit later on. Suffice it to say, by choosing the exposure um, type of physical exposure, then you need to play around with these aperture settings just like you would on a real world camera. But now you have other types of sort of exposure types here, if you will. OK, uh, that you can choose from. And uh, personally, I really like to use either the exposure value or no or no exposure um, uh, exposure types. <laughs> All right. So if I go under the exposure value here, you're going to see that now uh, we're using this exposure value slider here to define how bright or how um, well, 
dim that camera is going to be okay so we're we're not using the aperture to define the exposure we're just using the singular exposure value and if we switch our exposure type here to no exposure well in this case we we can't control the exposure of this camera by playing with the um, uh, with the aperture and we also can adjust it by with by playing with the exposure value parameter here the only way we can control it now is through the VFB post-processing stack here. So you create a new layer, for example, the exposure layer, and then you can lower or increase the exposure in here, okay? Now, let's make one thing very clear here. In terms of realism, there is no difference between going, uh, between going with any of these options, okay? It's just about different approaches to doing the same thing. So if you want to, if you're really used to working with real world cameras, you might actually want to stick with physical exposure and you're going to play around with all these settings here. If you just want to have a simple slider, just go with exposure value. Okay. You're going to have this exposure value slider and that's how you set your exposure. If you don't want to bother, just go with no exposure and play with the exposure layer in the VFB. All right. All right. Okay. So that's how you adjust the exposure on your camera. But now there's another, uh, there's a, there's a whole lot of other parameters in your uh, V-Ray physical camera uh, here. And let's just quickly explore some of them. So at the very top here, you have the camera type. You can see, you can choose between three different camera types, still movie or video. And what basically what this is going to do is it's just going to um, give you different options on how you can control your camera. So for example, if you just take a look at the aperture here, now that we're on a, a video camera type, instead of having a shutter speed, we have a latency parameter. Okay. It does the same thing. Um, so mainly these camera types are all about just doing the same thing, but in ways that you're more most comfortable with sort of similar to the exposure type here, there's not going to be a change in realism or anything like that. Um, it just so that you can work with the camera type and with the parameters that you're most comfortable with. So the video has the latency, for example, uh, a still camera type has the shutter speed and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. So and then we've got the sensor and lens parameters. So you can specify the field of view in degrees. If you so want to, uh, you can uh, play with the film gate, just like you would on a real world camera. Right. And then what you can also do is you can play around with the focal length. That's, that's a very important parameter. And you can also zoom in to your camera, but do note uh, that zooming in only, uh, you're only going to see this effect inside the rendered image. You're not going to see it in the viewport. Okay. Now, uh, one thing to note here is that, for example, uh, the focal length parameter, right? Uh, you have it available inside your V-Ray physical camera tag right here. And you also have it available in your Cinema 4D camera object. If you just go under object here, you can see that there's also a, fo a focal length parameter in here. Um, it doesn't matter which one you tweak. Uh, they're, they're all, they're both linked. Okay. Uh, but, uh, this is just so, you know, if you want to, cause focal length is typically a parameter that you do want to play around with quite, a, quite often. Um, and you just have it available inside the, uh, physical camera tag here as well, just so you know, it's, there's some ease of access here. All right. So you don't have to switch back to your standard cinema for the camera. You can kind of do all that from right inside the, uh, physical camera tag. All right. And just so you know, we're kind of repeating ourselves here, but if you see any parameters that are there in the viewer physical camera tag and in the standard cinema 3D camera, well, all those are linked there because again, ease of access. So you can tweak whichever one you like really. Okay. Then if we just continue on, uh, we've got these tilt and shift parameters here. So let me just scoot the VFB over here and I'm just going to move my camera into a different position, different angle. Okay. So now we're rotating camera downwards a little bit and you're going to notice that now, if we just take a look at sort of our safe frame here, right? Uh, you can see that this vertical sort of element, this is uh, like a, an element that goes straight up, right? It's part of that wall there. If we rotate our camera downwards, it kind of doesn't look like it's going straight up anymore. It kind of looks tilted compared to our save frame compared to our camera, right? So that's where that vertical uh, shift parameter can come in handy. So let me just zero out the rotation on my camera and I'm going to go inside the physical camera tag and I'll uh, play with the vertical shift parameter. 
And there you go. You can see we're kind of getting the same sort of angle, but now this line goes straight up, right? So all of that, those vertical lines are going to go straight up because we've vertically shifted our camera. Okay. Um, that can be useful, especially in, for arc, uh, arc vis type types of jobs, both in interiors and it's immensely used in ex exteriors, really. So it's a really important parameter. Okay. Uh, you also have the ability to do a vertical tilt if you so want to. So let me just uh, up this value to 1.5 and you're going to see uh, a tilt happening. Now the, the tilt is only going to be visible in the uh, DFB. All right. Uh, and it's not going to be visible in the interactive render because it's a render time effect, if you will. Uh, now the horizontal shift and horizontal tilt, they do the same thing. It's just, they do it horizontally. Okay. Okay, so now let me just undo uh, the changes I made to my camera here to the to the view. Okay, let's just go back to where we were before. Okay, now before we continue and before we actually uh, start talking about depth of field here, which I think would look rather cool um, given the angle that we're working with here, uh, I want to make a small change to my scene. I'm just going to single out this uh, region here so that it renders faster. I'm also going to lower the opacity on that denoiser. Yeah, so as you can see this bump effect here, it just looks a little bit too intense and the scale seems a little too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on my wall material. I'm going to select all the material tags uh, that have this um, material in them, if you will. And I'm going to lower the length U and V values. All right, just to get that um, scaling to be a little bit just want to make the texture a little bit smaller, okay? Because it looked a little bit big. And I think that's looking much better. Uh, what I also want to do here, I think, is if I just open up this material, um, I think I'll want to lower the bump uh, bump effect strength, okay? So I'm just going to lower it to 0 0.02. And let me see how this looks like. Okay, yeah, I think, I think that looks much better. The bump effect is still there, but it's a lot... A lot less noticeable and a lot less distracting. Okay, so I think that works much better. Let me up the opacity on my denoiser here, and um, this is just how you typically work in um, on your scenes, right? Uh, you come up with a different camera angle, and then you see all sorts of things that could be either mapped differently or the materials could be adjusted a little bit, and so on and so forth. So that's definitely something that's part of probably everyone's workflow, right? Right. Okay. Now, uh, before we start concluding this tutorial, we still need to talk about this really cool um, effect, and that is the depth of field effect. So uh, I'm going to go in my V-Ray physical camera. I'm going to go under the depth of field and motion blur menu here. And to enable depth of field, all you have to do is you need to toggle to on. And as you can see, now we have this really strong depth of field effect happening. But now the focus uh, of our camera is all wrong. So how do we set up our focus? Well, you can always go inside your standard uh, Cinema 3D camera object, right, under under the object menu, and you uh, sort of dial in the focus distance parameter. So you can do that uh, relatively easily. Uh, you can just uh, take this eyedropper tool and select uh, where you want your focus distance to be, and that's going to adjust it accordingly. But if you're on V-Ray 6, well, then what you can do is you can just right-click anywhere in the VFB, all right? And you can set the focus point for that camera like that. So right now I've clicked on this wall here. And as you can see, that totally adjusted the focus point on this wall. But you know what? This is actually not what I want the focus point to be. I, I think just focusing on this um, lamp here, I think that's gonna look the best, right? Right, now, um, how do you play with the strength of the depth of field effect? Well, you do that just like you would on a real world camera. You need to play with the F number. So right now the F number is set to one. If I up it to say eight, you're going to see that the depth of field is going to become a lot more shallower, a lot less intense, right? And that's, I think, what I want uh, to have in the scene. Uh, if Because depth of field can be used in, um, in very different creative ways. So if you go with a really no, uh, with a really low F number, you kind of create this effect where sometimes things will look like they're miniatures. Okay, and for this scene, I'm going for a more more realistic look. So I'm going to go with a higher, more realistic F number. Something that I would probably use on a real world camera in a scene like this. Okay, so I just want to 
um, put this foreground out of focus a little bit and maybe that background as well, but I want the lamp to be in complete focus. And that's, that's how you adjust that, okay? But now, um, there's one thing to mention here, and it kind of goes back to uh, when we said there are certain pros and cons to the exposure types here. If I switch to my physical exposure, exposure type here, okay? So now I'm essentially controlling this camera like I would a real world camera. And now you're gonna see that while this is good, it can also be a little cumbersome as well, ju just like it would be in real life. So if I lower the F number now, okay, uh, to make this image brighter, right? Because I'm using the physical exposure here. If I lower the F number, you're gonna see that now that depth of field is also going to become stronger, okay? Which is natural, this is, this is how apertures behave. So um, now what I would probably have to do is I would probably have to dial in the F number um, back to eight, because I kind of liked how that was looking, but now what I, I would probably have to up the ISO number here, or ISO number, to get that exposure back up. And so this is a perfectly valid workflow, but you know, that's why I personally prefer sticking to either no exposure or the exposure value exposure types, uh, because setting things up is a little bit easier, at least to me. Okay. Cause if I go with no exposure, for example, what I can now do is I can play with the F number, right? But it's not going to affect the actual exposure. Uh, it's now only going to affect the depth of field effect. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, well, then uh, there's also, if we just go through the rest of the settings that we have in the Vray physical camera here, uh, you have the ability to play with the bokeh effect. Um, you can have your own bitmap aperture here that you can plug. Um, you can play with the aperture shape, with the blades number, and so on and so forth. That's all accessible from he right here. Uh, you've got motion blur that you can enable. You can very easily do that if you've got movement in your scene. And uh, then you also have this distortion menu here. We're not going to go into details, uh, but suffice it to say, if you want different types of camera distortions, this is the menu where you want to be at. Okay, now before we conclude this tutorial, there's one more thing uh, that uh, we would like to showcase real quickly here. And that is if you, for example, Right now, I'm not liking the aspect ratio for this camera angle. I think it's too sort of landscapey, too horizontal. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go under my render settings under output, and I'm just going to play around with the aspect ratio in here. So I'm going to go for something of a square format, and immediately you've probably seen that my VFB here updated uh, real quickly, right? So I don't have to stop the uh, interactive render. The aspect ratio is going to update uh, as soon as I make changes to my width and height uh, settings right there. So that's a really neat feature. I personally really like it because uh, it can, you know, speed up your workflow a little bit when you're trying out different formats and such. Now, one additional thing that can speed up your workflow and is available uh, in V-Ray 6 uh, is if you just bring in a new proportion guide layer, well, then now you can get, get all these different proportion guides you can choose which, whichever one you like, and you can also customize it, obviously, right? Um, you can use whichever one you like, um, so that you can set up your camera the way that it makes the most compositional sense, right? Now, obviously, you can do the same thing from right inside the uh, standard uh, Cinema 3D camera by going under composition here, but that's only gonna show the proportion guides in the viewport, right? So if I just enable the grid, you can see that it's only in the viewport. It's not in the uh, in the VFB, but you know, if you enable, uh, proportion guides here in the VFB as a layer, well, then you can see them on your rendered image. All right. And that's it for this one. Hopefully you've now learned just how useful and easy to use the V-Ray physical camera is. Now we still have a couple of topics to cover before we conclude this series, but if you have any questions, critique, or even have specific requests for future tutorial topics, please do let us know in the comments. And as always, until next time, take care, everybody.